The wars have finally come to the wars in the early half today. As trouble loom in the early half today, a lot of people shed tears because they have finally come for Shio Okimbaluyi of Chinese television in the early half today. You know, it was a few hours ago that Shio Okimbaluyi exposed a lot of secrets through his guests regarding Bola Ahmed Tinubu, how the Supreme Court made their ruling and the rascality that they did in course of the ruling, how they did their criminalities in course of the ruling. Shio exposed everything through his guests and this alone of course a big blow to Bola and Mentinubu now. They said it is a must, you must go to jail. And a lot of people have already turned and they said, no, this must not take place in a country that we practice democracy. This must not take place in a country where we have right to speech and all of that. So I'd like us to stay connected to the end of this video. And I will show you the video that caused the trouble in the early half today. And who caused the trouble to Shion Okimbalo, you will see everything. And the reason why they said Shion must be in jail for three years, you will see everything. So I'd like us to stay connected to the end of this video. If you can share this video and show it share share to different social media platforms let it go viral and if you cannot share it just click the like button like it give it a thumb up so that it to be recommended for us we will be still connected i'm coming back again welcome you back to lightbulb wash tv i don't have bad news for you today the home of religious gossip and the boys will leave the fight for mohammed what is happening in the christian door join now it makes sense with lightbulb Hello my great and wonderful viewers, welcome back to Lajibo Watch TV. But those of you coming across this channel for the very first time, ensure you click the rest of the button appearing in your video screen. And don't forget, click the notification bell icon so that whenever we drop a new video in few hours time, YouTube will easily let you to know. A lot of trouble is looming out right now as far as Nigeria is concerned. You know, it's no more in news that Shion conducted an interview few hours ago. They released this video and this video has sparked up a lot of reactions on social media and this alone have got Shion walking by of Chinese television into a big trouble. But, you know, it's not really news that Benjabi Amela came out some time ago when Tinubu traveled to France. You know, Benjabi Amela came out and made it not to the general public that anybody that spoke about Bola and met Tinubu wrongly or negatively, the person will be arrested and will be sentenced to three years imprisonment. That was the thing that they put in place for their self. You know, but she came back and finally kicked it off. And a lot of people are finally marched out in the area and they said, No, there's nothing they can do to Shio Kimbalui. Nothing must happen to Shio Kimbalui. A lot of people said, Nothing must happen to this guy because this guy is a very reputable journalist and is known to call his speed a speed. This guy will conduct a sensible interview on like other journalists in Nigeria. He and Rafael Senor for Rice News, they are the only journalists in Nigeria that conduct sensible interview for politicians in Nigeria and if he has not taken the politicians who expose themselves in live television program through the interview of these two journalists. But looking at what is happening now, it has been known that they have been monitoring Shion or Kimbalui but now they think they have a big chance now. So let us to stay connected to the end of this video you will see the view that caused the trouble in the early half today and the guests that caused the trouble for Shion Okimbalu you will see everything in this video they say Shion must be in three years imprisonment so if you can share this video ensure you share it share to different social media platforms let it go viral and if you cannot share it just like it like it give it a thumb up so that it will be recommended for us you know some time ago Shion Okimbalu invited the guest to Chinese television and when he granted the interview to this guest they sanctioned Shion Okimbalu and Chinese television Television. They said she Okimbalu must pay the fine of 30 million naira. Maybe they paid it to the name of Chinese television or whatever, I don't know. But they pull a fine of 30 million naira on Chinese television because of the interview that she granted few months ago. And you know, even the files in of Arise News, when they granted an interview to some guests in their media platform Arise News, you know, they sanctioned them. They said no they must pay a fine and all of that they did all these things and since then they have been monitoring mbc have been monitoring these two big media platforms chinese television and arise them because they believe that they invite guests that call a spade a spade whenever they invite their guests they allow their guests to talk and speak their mind regarding the nation called nigeria they allow their guests to express their opinion vividly it is not like other media platform where you will not be able to say what is in your mind but chinese television and rice news have been a different platform in nigeria and it's causing tinubu a tough time because whatever thing they say regarding bola met tinubu is not favorable to him because their guests always say the truth the way it is they call it spade a spade but now they said the guest that she okay invited a few hours ago the video that she okay dropped because they said she intentionally did that video 
He did that video outside Chinese television. They say he intentionally did the video to expose Bola Ahmed Tinubu. He exposed the criminality of the Supreme Court. He exposed the criminality of the tribunal. He exposed the criminality of INEC as a whole. And he exposed all the atrocities that the wife, the daughter, and the son of Tinubu are committing in the Asso Rock Chamber because it's normally news that there is now the office of the first son, the office of the first daughter, the office of the first lady that is not constitutional. And these people are all operating evil. The office of the first in law is now in place in Nigeria. These people are practicing nepotism because they said it out in this very video. This video exposed everything, and that is the problem that Tinubu is having with Sheon right now. That is why they sent DSS to go and pick this guy and all of that. That's why they want to put these guys in jail right now, just because of the secret that were exposed in a public space because they never want anybody to come out to expose these things. So stay connected to the end of this video. You will see the video that caused the trouble. You will see what she really did in the video. And you will see the way people are saying no. Tio must not go to anywhere. That they must not do anything to Shia Okinbali. You will see the secret that was exposed. You will see the reason why they are against Shia Okinbali right now. And you see the reason why they want the video to be deleted. Because they don't want the video to stand in the limelight of the media again. They want it deleted. But this video is going nowhere. A lot of us have copied the video. So you will see everything in this video. So share this video if you can share it. And if you can share it, just like it. And coming back again as you watch. Stay connected. <laughs> you know the truth the people that are suffering most in this government today are muslims so what has the muslim muslim ticket benefited them it was a political strategy it was not a religious strategy but it worked it failed because they won the election through technical glitch what do you mean by that what i mean by that is that technical glitch glitched the original election and by 4 30 a.m when people were asleep they gave us results that emanated from technical glitch they failed but those who believe that uh, your position as to who won the election it was wrong to legally religion and procedurally uh, Heineck declared yes. the person who won the election mm -hmm. the court at two different occasions declared that Balatin and the APC won the election but you don't believe it right I was in the court of appeal the first orders we asked the court of appeal to give to us was an order that I next should allow us to inspect the beavers three orders I neck obeyed none of it and yet I neck went to the same court and told the court to give them order to reconfigure the beavers before we inspected it and the court did nothing and then when we proceeded in the hearing of the case the court now said we had 21 days to produce every evidence which INEC refused to give us. And then they say subpoen witnesses cannot come to give witness to come, they cannot come to give evidence after 21 days. 176,000 pulling units. They say we should prove it pulling unit by pulling unit and you have three weeks is that not the position of the law i disagreed with them because from the law i read it couldn't have been the position because you are dealing with an adversary who you say did something wrong the adversary has interest in hiding information from you and then you the court you're saying if he can hide this information and this evidence from you for 21 days, your case is dead. It couldn't have been the intentment of the law. But the court says that, I mean, for you, you are claiming yes. and alleging yes. that there is no substantial mm -hmm. uh, compliance mm -hmm. with the electoral law. Oh, yes. And uh, you, it, the law says you must prove beyond reasonable doubt. The, the law is very clear on electronic transmission. Now, let me tell you the rule of law. In one case, Miscellaneous Offenses Tribunal of Sosokora 4, they defined rule of law as doing everything according to the law. 
and making sure the government actions are done according to the law and that case excluded discretionary powers and arbitrary powers of government and you know what the courts ruled they said INEC had the discretion to choose whether they would transmit electronically or not that is tangentially against even the fundamental definition of rule of law no creature of law is allowed to use arbitrary power or discretionary power to do anything that's against rule of law because the definition of rule of law is that everything must be done according to law and the law is very clear you must transmit electronically section 65 is there then if you don't want to say section 65 because they don't use certain words what about section 64 mr okonko what is the standard of proof in an election matter the process of law is very clear the court told you that INEC has discretion where is it in the law and i'm saying it is fundamentally wrong because that goes against the judgment of supreme court against what rule of law has defined itself as i told you that rule of law rules out discretionary powers and INEC is a creation of the law INEC itself made rules and regulation and say they must transmit electronically after that 2020 election i watched your program and you were asking some of the electoral officers because you wanted yourself to know what is the position of the law are you going to transmit electronically and they say yes they will transmit electronically that that is the position of the law in your program meanwhile the court said no that's not the position of the law because they, they have a discretion to do whatever they like can you imagine and the supreme court supported it i disagree with that and i will continue to disagree with that perpetually because it's a destruction of rule of law INEC is a creation of the law and INEC must do all its work according to the law a creation of the law is telling you what the law is and you the court is saying no that's not the law is that not ridiculous mm, are those who believe that the elections are over uh, the winner has been declared the losers have been declared is it possible that Kenneth Okonko move on from this why not have you moved on mm, I have not moved on because you have not moved on why did you ask me because of your belief and your standpoint good which may need some clarity and that's, that's why i'm asking why, you that's why i clarify so if you move on i will move on have you accepted that bola Tinubu is nigeria's president i've been asked this thing before the supreme court is the final court of the land i said the judgment of the supreme court has bestowed constitutionality on his regime but not democracy democracy is the government of the people the power must verifiably flow from the people i have not been convinced that his power flew from the people because the people have not been told according to the electoral act section 62 they've not been given their results pulling unit by pulling unit and tabulated and calculated an answer given if you have seen such please let me know i have not and in mathematics if you go straight to code the answer without the formula they will tell you probably you stole it so if you have seen the formula with which they arrived at that conclusion you as a journalist pulling unit by pulling unit i will be willing to cross check it the judiciary when we went to Mr. court Okunko. when we went to court by the IRF portal we were able to calculate to show that we won the election in Benue and we won the election in rivers but they say no it's not admissible because he came by a supreme witness which brought his evidence after the 21 days so sorry the, the judiciary is a leg in our democratic process so yes. if the judiciary yes. says president Tunubu is the president that is why he's answering president yeah but do you see him as your president though i wouldn't know what you're saying i said the supreme court is the final court the first statement i made was that i disagree with the supreme court but because i'm a democrat i accept the judgment that is the judgment the supreme court said 
and that is what I accepted. But will you be willing, for example, not yes. because you're a Niger, no, you're a Nigerian, yes. and you said you have accepted this? Are you willing to to move on and perhaps in some way help this government to succeed? Very well. If you are called today yes. by the government of the day to work with them, yes. would you take it? Criticizing the government constructively is part of helping them. But if you are actively called yes. to play a role and an announcement is made yes. that Kenneth Nkunko is taking this role in this government, would you take it? I am enjoying the role I'm playing now. So you will not take which it? Which is to critically analyze whatever they are doing and provide solutions. So well, you will not take any role? My preference is what I am doing now. To be a critic? To be an opposition leader? So that's the job of the opposition leader. So, but for the sake of the nation, would you be willing to work with this government? I think the government needs me. They need me. The government needs me more as an opposition leader. You, do you have a feeling that in some way that Nigeria is headed for in the right direction under this government in the last nine months? Anaki looms. Where? In Nigeria. How do you mean? Anaki is defined as a state of disorder due to absence of or non-recognition of authority or other controlling systems. In this nation now, you could see the absence of government in the security and welfare of the people. Total absence. Let's take the issue of security. And you see why I always cry about rule of law. Anarchy is the absence of rule of law and the presence of state of nature, which Thomas Hobbes described as being characterized in a nation where life has become short, brutish, nasty, poor, and solitary. We are approaching the state of nature. Take the issue of security. More than 200 persons were massacred on the eve of Christmas in Plateau State. Where was your government? They were in Lagos celebrating Christmas party. Absence of government. Shame. In March alone. And March has not reached. Today is 20th. So meaning within two weeks of March, more than 165 farmers have been killed and 3 billion naira demanded as ransom. Farmers, we have 109 senatorial zones in Nigeria, meaning for the first two weeks of March, average of more than one farmer has been killed in every senatorial zone. Absence of government. You have seen in this March how 287 innocent children and poop heels we are taken in Kaduna and headed like cattle into the bull without anybody confronting them. No security presence, absence of authority as anarchy. Would you blame all of this on this present government? You have seen how our men on uniform, 17 of them, massacred in South South. When this government came in, they gave their office, the villa, with coat of arms to a non-state actor to malign our officers, to call them thieves. Is it by accident that the massacring of those 17 soldiers were from the area where the same person that called them thieves came from? I shouted and warned because I've been a lawyer to the army and I'm bearing a wound in my heart that I defended some officers in the court martial. One cases for them. And some of them went into the field and they were massacred by bandits, terrorists. So I am personally pained. I shouted. I said, this government, you don't know the damage you're doing to the image of our armed forces that you're allowing somebody to come to Asorok sitting on the coat of arms meaning he's bearing the effrontery of the government to call our military men thieves 
now you have seen that the people are now treating the military men as thieves massacring and killing them when they just want to make peace in march alone that can be described as much madness in the southeast you saw how people went into the unth medical college and abducted the deputy director and the security man in the southwest you saw how two traditional leaders were killed and they stretched their hand to quara and killed another traditional leader. in sokoto you saw the way they were kidnapped in boronu we will go to idp camps i've just mentioned the six geopolitical zones we are is safe in fct nabiha died and this government you see these bandits do no longer recognize the authority of this government that's why somebody has their phone three to come out publicly and say let me negotiate let the government buy me to negotiate with the terrorists that was why the terrorists kidnapped 287 persons and demanded 40 trillion naira as ransom why they are looking at themselves as the government that is anarchy non-recognition of the authority of government and we're talking only about security you want to talk about the economy and you will be amazed first subsidy is gone they are paying almost a trillion naira monthly on first subsidy so what have they achieved apart from punishing the people employment expatriate employment levy they introduced it without even consulting man manufacturing association of nigeria they have now removed it they sanctioned Niger Republic. Ill advisedly punished the whole eight northern states, predominantly Muslims, in a Muslim Muslim ticket. And after nine months, they removed it. Niger Republic said, No, we're not ready yet. You know why? Because you may have the right to declare when a war will commence, but you will not have the right to declare when it ends. The Miloko philosophy is family to crassy. Have you ever seen Pitobi receive any land in Anambra State? He rejected every land, including the one he's entitled to. Go to Lagos State. You know better than myself. Some people describe the owners of Lagos as the largest land owners in the whole of West Africa. Go to Lagos. The same dynasty has been ruling from 1999. Wife, senator, daughter, Yagwebe, son. Even in as the leader of Nigeria, <laughs> the same pattern. I mean, you you're making allegations of nepotism. That's what not you, allegations. The facts are there. That this coming is nepotistic. Something worse than nepotistic is that fair to say i mean litocracy you know what it means when you place your children in order of protocol before ministers of the federal republic of nigeria what do you call that what do you call that i saw what is that you know what it means when you put your wife at par with the vice president of the federal republic of nigeria in terms of manpower in terms of security have you seen a Michelle Obama being involved in the political process of America? Let me tell you, I thought Buhari's regime was going to be the worst. In nine months, this government has surpassed it. Let me tell you, this government started from the man himself to the wife to the sons using the private jet to attend parties desecrating the hollow chamber of leadership talk about the daughters talk about the sons in laws the daughters in laws then when you go to the daughters and sons of friends what do you call that <laughs>
thank you for staying connected my great and wonderful viewers and hear what Kenneth Koko said in this very video you know Jim Okimbalo here of Chinese television granted him an interview outside Chinese television you see that place is not Chinese television and Jim intentionally asked him some questions you know first of all was asking him some questions based on his personal life and all of that you study theology you study all of that what was a spiritual life all about and all of that but all of a sudden Jim digressed into politics then she was asking him some sensitive questions regarding what is happening in the Nigeria political zone and she was asking him questions based on what happened in the course of the election in 2020 February 25 what really transpired and what happened in the course of the court rulings the court proceedings because Kenneth Koko is one of the leading lawyer of Peter Obi then during the proceedings of the court and Kenneth Koko answered all the questions that she was asking him you can see the way this guy answered she asked him if the number should call Kenneth Koko today and give him an appointment for nation building and how they're going to build Nigeria and all of that. Nkoko said he's not going to collect it. This guy said a lot of things. The rascality of INEC in course of the election. After INEC announced the number as at 4 30 a.m. midnight, when they announced the number as the president of Nigeria, Kenneth Okoko made mention of everything that everything that INEC did is illegal. And the way the Supreme Court and the tribunal backs up the criminality of INEC, this guy expressed everything. You can hear everything in this video. We've not listened to him very well. You can still get back to this video and still recheck what Kenneth Okoko said the secret that this guy exposed and that is what i've been causing the problem few hours ago it have been causing the problem in the early after that's why they said they must put Kenneth Koko in jail and including Shio Kimbali because they believe that he will intentionally brought that man because that man had been a big blow to them right for the time that they have been inviting him to different television programs different television platforms like Arise TV and all of that because there was a time they invited Kenneth Koko to Arise News and this guy articulated his feeling he has Expressed everything. He exposed everything that APC Tinubu did. He exposed everything in live television. What they did not want him to say in the live television for everybody to hear. What they did not want the public space to hear. This guy exposed everything, and that is where they have been having problem with him. That is where the issue have been emanating from. And it was when Kenneth Koko was invited to arise. That was when NBC, Sumo, or the media platform, the big media platform like Channel Television, arise. He said if they should invite guests that did not control his speech all of that that they're going to sanction the television program they're going to ban them and all of that that is where the issue emanated from it is true in the that they've been inviting out some other people and all of that that is why they don't want these people to come out to call a speed a speed that is what i've been happening and finally show did not invite Kenneth Koko to Chinese television platform he didn't invite Kenneth Koko to Chinese media house precisely she invited him to a personal media house which is not even channels and he granted the interview he asked this guy question because Kenneth Koko even asked him he said why are you asking me all these questions he asked Sheon when he was pulling Sheon in this video he asked him why are you asking me all these questions Sheon said you just want to know the right answer because Sheon know what is trying to dig out to the public space and the election that they thought he had passed they dig a lot of this out in course of the election what really transpired because Kenneth Koko is in court and he witnessed all the court proceedings and all of that so he's just like an eyewitness so we express everything in this video and this guy express everything without fear because when NBC wrote a letter to him and they wrote letter to Arise News then that they're going to ban Arise News and they're going to arrest Kenneth Koko that they will put him in prison and all of that he wrote a letter back to NBC this guy have the big mind to write back to NBC in the name of Tinubu and all of that and all of them that are behind NBC all of them packing up NBC he wrote to them he said they did not have the mind that if they should dare come near him that he will bring them down that was what Kenneth Koko said he said it in a live video that was few months ago when they said they wanted to arrest him because of what he said in Arise News about Bola Ahmed Tinubu just because this man come out to articulate his feeling fundamental human right, right to freedom of speech because of the fact that this man come out to call his speed his speed he never sugarcoat all their atrocities all their criminalities and all of that he said no this guy must be bullied the way they have been bullying different men their houses and a lot of their houses in Nigeria today they can't come out to say the truth the way it is even if they should invite guests they will even caution the guest throughout the entire program that the guest should be conscious of what he or she will be saying and the words he will be using since he's consigning Bola and Metinubu that is what is happening but Kenneth Koko said if they should come near him 
that he have the right to say anything he wants to say because that is the whole truth he said nobody can ever manipulate the truth in his mouth he said they should come near him that he will make sure that he bring them down he bring Tinubu down he bring embassy down because he see himself as a very terrible lawyer that knows what the rule of law states that is the same thing that Kenneth Okoko is saying in this video he said he's not scared of anyone and he will say the truth the way it is that it's only Peter Obi that can face Nigeria that everything that Tinubu is doing he removes subsidy in a hurry and at the end of the day subsidy is returned without Nigerians getting anything Nigeria went through a lot of sufferings Nigeria went through hell because of the subsidy that was removed and yet subsidy is restored back and the fuel price is still in the same price dollar is reducing now dollar is reducing against naira naira is appreciating against dollar but the things that have high up in the country nothing is going down there's no price control this country is not working and Tinubu wife came out yesterday and she was running her mouth that Nigerians in the diaspora that they are going to the diaspora to do cab that the cab that they can't do in Nigeria even when they are graduates they are ashamed of doing cab in Nigeria but they go abroad to do cab then I asked a question yesterday you want to compare how much a cabman in United States of America is earning to the cabman of Lagos State in Nigeria or to the cabman of Nigeria states or all of that you want to compare it should we do the analysis I asked Remy Tinobu the question yesterday but looking at what is happening now Kintoko can finally come out to make justice for all the arising matters in Nigeria right now the insecurity thing is there the economic crisis is there everything is there nothing is being fixed but these people are chasing after shadow that is not even chasing them so drop a pin in the comment section of this video do you really think Chiyo or Kimbalo will be jailed for three years because of this video that was released because according to Femi Bajabi Amela the spokesperson of Tinubu in a particular program he said anybody that spoke about Tinubu wrongly or negatively the person will be arrested and be put to three years imprisonment he may mention of this statement when Tinubu traveled to France when nobody know where Tinubu go to in France when Tinubu embarked on an unofficial duty in France that was when Bajabi Amela main mention of all these things they are just trying to bring out laws to just suit themselves they don't want anything that will affect them forgetting the fact that criticism is part of nation building criticism is one of the major weapons that will make a nation to go far and be strengthened but they don't want criticism and yet they are doing and they are going and they are putting Nigeria on the wrong path so drop up now in the comment section of this video as I'm gonna get to get on that thing that for you and share follow me on my social media handles on Facebook at Lipo Watch TV and Lipo Entertainment and on Instagram at large people guess what guys see you in my next video